Welcome to Muller Time, episode 17. 17, all right. This is the 4th, if you're listening to this on the 4th of July, it's because I actually was able to cut down our, uh, you know, our release time. I'm thinking about dropping them on Wednesday from now on. Okay. Um, By the way, if you're listening on uh, Podbean, we're going to be featured this week, actually starting on the 4th. So if you're listening on Podbean, thanks a lot for uh, checking us out there. And if you could write us a review or... uh, you know, just uh, drop us some kind words to be appreciated. So what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, Eric? I'm doing very well. This being the 4th of July, how do you feel about your country? Hey, I love my country. I hope we still have it for more 4th of Julys after this one. Yeah. So uh, real quick, went to the, caught up at the march, uh, protested against as, as we've called them, baby jails. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know, right? It was, it was a good turnout. There were a lot of, it wasn't, you know, man, it wasn't as many as the March for Our Lives, though. Well, look, it wasn't, it wasn't hyped the same way as the March for Our Lives or the Women's March. Yeah. Marches two years in a row. Yeah. It was, uh, but it was, it was a good turnout. A lot but it was in are. every major city in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Every, lots of minor cities. Yeah. I got a little bit of, uh, there were, by the way, to show the importance of this, every major California politician was there. I mean, dude, everybody. Um, Gavin Newsom was there, our next governor. I mean, obviously, Garcetti. Um, Now, uh, everyone or just ones on particular sides? Like, how about California's very own Devin Nunes? I bet he wasn't there. Oh, yeah. Devin uh, Devin Nunes did not make it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Although today on Twitter, I noticed uh, Devin Nunes in the middle of the day was tweeting out like clickbait shark videos. This guy is on our tax dollars just fucking around on Twitter. It's it's Mm. amazing. Well, also on Twitter today, the official White House account, the official Twitter account for the People's House was making political attacks. Oh, were they really? Yeah. Uh, They attacked both um, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. What what did they say? I totally missed that. Um, Oh, just being very condescending. Um, If if you want to ramble for a second, I'll pull up the exact tweet on my handy little device right here. You know what we'll do? We'll check it out a little later, and we'll uh, if it's any if it's uh, good stuff, we'll put it up on the Facebook page. But the point being, Mm -hmm. uh, the White House official Twitter account, I don't think, is supposed to be Mm -hmm. making political attacks. Yeah, in the same way that uh, they dropped another article on Scott Pruitt, who is among many transgressions, is not supposed to be. Using the EPA lawyers on a personal <laughs> landlord dispute. What is wrong with this guy? Yeah. It's every day. Yeah. I mean, with all of his um, crazy spending, but the fact that he wanted the used mattress, I mean, oh, what yeah. is wrong yeah. with him? We're going to be coming back That's to that. so creepy. I still remember how disgusted you were. The, it was actually really funny when I was editing that episode. Oh. I kept going back to that part. <laughs> hey, I got a little bit of uh, Maxine Waters at, uh, at oh, the yeah. rally on Saturday. Oh, did you? Let's hear it. Yeah. We're not afraid of you. You should be ashamed. We want our children connected back to their parents. She was, uh, she was awesome, man. People hate her on the right. Yeah, and that's because she's doing something right. That's what I actually, the reason I played that clip, that's just what I want to talk about, about the civility thing. She's got it. Mm. And that's that's what you need to be doing. I've had friends on the left telling me, really kind of going after, and I'm like, I don't think you understand that how we got here is by being civil to these people. Yeah. She, oh, there was, there was so much more. I'm not going to play her whole thing. But at the end, she just said this thing like, if you come after me, you better shoot straight. <laughs> And I was like, man, I mean, I, I was just, I was ecstatic. Yeah. That's that's a fighter. That's what we need. Yeah, no, um, she, she's not allowed to talk the way she talks, but Trump can. Right. She's not nearly as vulgar, but she is um, kind of huh. as off the cuff as anybody else in all of politics, if not more so. But why why is it bad when she does it? Is it because huh. she's a black woman? I, I'm going to go with the Jeopardy buzzer on that yeah. one. Yeah. There's nothing Trump, well, okay, so Trump... Hates he hates black people and he hates women. Mm-hmm. So that black women are like kryptonite to him. Yeah, I, you can even see it visibly if you've ever seen him interact w- with a black woman, <laughs> which is very rare. He really, you could tell is you could hear. I, I can tell the voice of his father is in his head. All that filth that he that he put in his head as a kid. Yeah, it's disgusting. But yeah, the um, march is great. It, it actually ended at the detention center uh, oh, downtown, wow. which I they're not they don't they're not housing. I mean that's a city jail. 
So okay. to the best of my knowledge, they're not. Now, I was not able to attend the march this weekend, so I don't know exactly which detention center you may be referring to. Is there a um, an immigration detention center, or was it just like the regular L- downtown LA it, Twin Towers? It was Metropolitan City Jail, yeah, the, okay. the Twin Towers, yeah. Mm-hmm. And as we've spoken about, I mean, you and I have been to more than our share of marches and events. Uh, you've, you've done a lot. But for all you other guys out there, make sure you're, you're uh, getting involved somehow. It's just, it's our civic duty. Yeah, and we're, we're, there's going to be no shortages of protests through, at least through December. There is one thing I want to say. This this abolish ICE thing seems to be, I saw a lot of signs there with that. I, I respect the viewpoint, but we really need to on the left or just sane people in general. We need to focus on one message. I don't personally think that's, the what the message that should be communicated the message is close down these fucking baby jails and hold them responsible i understand people might say that's related but it just seemed a little bit off kilter in my opinion well yeah the shutting down a particular branch of law enforcement that is a that is a radical idea well um maybe ice just needs a complete rehauling and just fire everybody and well, that's not going to happen. To me, it's about what's coming from the top. It's mm. Trump. Because ICE before mm. this was not, there were no baby jails. I don't care what the right is saying. Yeah, that's not what the right's going to tell you. Right, of <laughs> course. Yeah, I know. I've seen all the photos, the the misinformation. We, we all know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what they're doing is during Obama, if there was an unaccompanied teenager who came over, that person uh, spent time in a detention center. But of course, as we all know, under Obama, they were not separating babies and mothers. Okay, well, then here's the response then I would ask someone on the right that just saying, well, Obama had all the baby jails. Mm-hmm. Are any of the Obama baby jail prisoners still being held in jail right now? And no, they're not. It'd be good to interview. Yeah. I hope one of these journalists, I'm sure we're not the first person to think of that. Someone must be looking to interview these people. What was it like for you under your time yeah. when you were under the Obama? I'd like to hear that. Yeah. Look, if I'm, you know, I'd, I'd like to hear that perspective. Look, I, I'm still going to go with the radical idea that... Um, these children that are being separated, they're being put into, you know, some really crazy child sex ring. Well, you know, since you, when, when you said that and I, I kind of laughed and I, I mean, I didn't laugh at it, but I was like, well, of course we joked about you being the, the love thing, Alex Jones mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. Uh, somebody said something. And I thought about something with Trump. It's not that I think something like that happens, but this guy's always looking for an angle. If there was a way to make money with adoptions or something, yeah. I have no doubt that he would be involved in that. Zero. Okay. Uh, I don't think everything's like true detective or something necessarily, but I think I think a lot of sinister stuff is happening. Well, look, when these parents are being uh, deported back to Central America, but they they leave the kids here to be adopted, I mean, come on. What, what are they doing with these kids, really? I read one documented case where a in, it's in Missouri. If I can find the article, I will put it back up, where a parent was deported. This this was um this was a, this was not recently this was a little while ago, but under Trump, they were deported, and the kid is up for adoption, and now they're fighting. The mom is fighting it out with them in the court. It was it was they stole her kid. Yeah, it, it was horrible, and of course it happened in a place like Missouri. It's always going to happen in a place where the government leans leans right. Of course, right. Yeah. That would not have happened here in California. I'll yeah. tell you that right now. Yeah. Uh, since since the last episode. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. I know. I know. Look, we knew this was coming. It was going to happen. It's you, we can't be surprised that Kennedy stepped down. I you're you knew that was coming? I didn't know that was coming. I I you had to assume one of these judges was going to step I, down for maybe not necessarily Kennedy, but it, it when the election happened, it had to be assumed that Gorsuch wasn't the only one getting a seat. I thought someone else was going to step down, but definitely not him. In fact, I thought it would be like one of the Ginsburg or somebody. Well, no, it's not going to be Ginsburg. She's going to well, die before she steps down if Trump's still president. I, I mean, Kennedy was not, what is he, 80? 81. He's a young 81. The main thing I want to talk about with that was, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's come to my attention, and I'm sure you saw it, that Justin Kennedy, his son, is Trump's personal banker at Deutsche Bank yeah. and gave him over a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. What a fascinating coincidence. Yeah. What that means exactly, I don't know, but that's that's too much to be a coincidence. No, it's yeah, it's it's there are no coincidences. No. Something is going on there. Yeah. I don't know if they worked Kennedy or they just worked him like, you know, the charm offensive 
or if it was something more sinister, but there's something going on there. Okay, so let's assume the worst, and Trump's, uh, whoever he announces, he promised to announce his choice uh, this coming Monday, Mm -hmm. July 9th. All right, well, let's say then before August is up, uh, McConnell pushes it through, and we have a new Supreme Court justice. All right, then now let's fast forward to uh, Mueller turns in his report, and it it ends up Trump is going in front of Supreme Court. Right. Do uh, Gorsuch and the other nominee that Trump uh, put on the bench, do they have to recuse themselves? I think they're going to just do whatever they want. I mean, I, I can't imagine the um, the Constitution covers um, what happens when a president has to go on trial from the Supreme Court. Yeah, I don't know if our Constitution covers that. But ethics tells me that maybe one of the Supreme Court justices or both that were... Uh, appointed by Trump, need to recuse themselves if Trump is what's being uh, on trial, what's being put on trial in the Supreme Court. Well, what I do think is the Democrats should be making an argument like that. I think they should be making every damn argument you can think of because they mm-hmm. stole that seat mm-hmm. by making up an argument about with Merrick Garland. Oh, no, it's the Biden rule. That's a real thing. The Biden rule. The Biden rule. Right. It's a real thing. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's, if the, I swear to God, if the Democrats don't come up with something here, they're going to really lose even more people than they've lost. Did you see Michael Moore on Bill Maher, Real Time with Bill Maher and HBO this past uh, Friday night? And did you hear his suggestion? Uh, fill the streets of the Capitol, right? Yeah, fill the streets of the Capitol so they can't go in and do business. I thought Michael... I didn't. I'll, I will travel out to D.C. to do that. Yeah, I didn't hear him say that second part about uh, like kind of stopping them, but I wholeheartedly agree with yeah. Michael Moore. That was a great interview. Yeah. And look... That guy called it. I mean, he did say Trump was going to win. Mm-hmm. He knows a few things. That was, um, yeah. No, there's, there's, <laughs> coming back to civility, en- enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. Fuck civility. Yeah. I've, I've said that for years. Yeah. By the way, any comedian knows civility do- doesn't work. No. I've been thinking about writing an article about that, how the perspective of uh, doing stand-up or improv can, like I could help these people. When you're getting heckled and stand up, you take them down. Okay, um, are the calls for civility only coming from the right? I don't. Is it the people on the left calling for civility? No, it's only the people that are now going to be the victims of right. incivility, like Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Uh, Those are the ones calling for civility now. That they're fuck, all the, Huckabee yeah. Sanders. Yeah. Um, by the way, speaking of that, I learned something that I feel like this should, this is so amazing. It should almost be folded into the Mueller investigation. Do you know how old? Fuck of E. Sanders is? She's only mid-30s, right? I thought she was at least 50. Yeah. No, she's like mid-30s. <laughs> she's 35 years old, yeah, man. exactly. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh-huh. Is that what being a total scumbag does to you? I, it must be. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was insane. Mm-hmm. All right. We got to get to the... Uh, <laughs> there's, there's too much. All right. Let me just pull this up. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, uh, President... Donald Trump was the victim of a prank. I know. I, I I just it just gets better and better with this guy. It's not victim's not the right word, by the way. Yeah, what is the right word? I don't know. Um, he was the the laughing stock. Uh, he was the uh, uh, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. If victim's the right word, but I, okay. I'll, let's go with victim. Sir, your call is connected. Hi, Bob. Hey, how are you? How are you? Congratulations on everything. We're proud of you. What is he proud of? Who is proud of him? Wait. Uh, n- n- Congratulations. Oh. Great job. You went through a tough, tough situation. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? All right. So Stuttering John is uh, trying to make Trump think that he's uh, Bob Menendez. And now boy, he got off from uh, whatever charges were he had. What was that? Okay. Yeah. So let me say first, I'm a lifelong Howard Stern fan. <laughs> so when I heard this, I also... I was ent- we've entered the Black Mirror territory a long time ago. In case you guys don't listen, Howard Stern obviously is the most famous radio host ever, and Stuttering John Melendez has been a long time. I don't know if you want to call him a co-host, a sidekick. I love that you're mansplaining Howard Stern to our audience. Oh, wait. Oh, is that you think you think I'm mansplaining? But we mostly have probably uh, we have a pretty mixed audience. It doesn't matter. You're mansplaining Howard Stern. But but over, overseas in a lot of places they might not listen to Howard. Okay. And mansplaining. I, I, wait, how is that mansplaining? I don't get that. <laughs> mansplaining I'm just implies busting. I'm just busting your tops. I don't know. I just okay. I just want to know what that means. <laughs> uh, so see now I lost my train of thought. I'm there. sorry. Uh, Stuttering John is one of his sidekicks, legendary for being one of the first prankster type guys on the red carpets and all that. 
Anyway, so Bob Menendez is a senator from my home state of New Jersey who recently beat some uh, corruption charges, as is standard in New Jersey. And Stuttering John... <laughs> And I don't think a very fair situation, but congratulations. Thank you so much. So basically during that, Trump is like doing that thing where he relates what happened to him, to him. Yeah. No, he's jealous. He beat corruption charges. That's what Trump wants to do. But the best part about that whole call, and you guys can get online, um, is that Stuttering John didn't use a vo- Let me explain this. Stuttering John and Howard Stern know each other. Because he used to appear on the show. <laughs> That's right. He was a regular so, on Stern not, show. Not trying to mansplain, but just think about it for a second. That makes sense. They know each other. In other words, he prank called them using his own voice. It's like if you prank called me <laughs> with your own voice. Uh, How dumb is this guy? Yeah. I mean, really. All right. Well, let, let's give him a slight benefit of the doubt. Because um, if I understand correctly, uh, the White House... <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, the operator of the phone on, or the, the White House operator has to patch the call through. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the, the White House operator calls Stuttering John, thinking that it's Bob Menendez, mm-hmm. and then um, then patches the, the call to the president. So, well, Trump um, is being told, all right, now we have this person on the phone for you. So he's right. told that right away, and he starts talking to him before Stuttering John even really says anything. Yeah. So you know, it's look, it's it's not really on Trump for having taken that call. The the blame goes entirely to his call screening. And it's, it's that's that's national security right there. It's all of them. They're all morons. Yeah. But Trump for not recognizing the voice of the guy that he's literally been in that studio with twenty times is hilarious. But yeah. Okay, so if Stuttering John can do that. What can one of Putin's spies do? No, he's our president is tapped by probably 20, 30 countries yeah. right now. I, yeah. I'm, I'm sure of it. Pro, probably countries who don't even have a real intelligence service like uh, Fiji. Have okay, tapped. well, it's one thing to be tapped. It's another thing to get the president on the phone and get him to talk. Yeah. Yeah. So who else has done that? What, John, what Stuttering John did? What other countries, what other spies have gotten away with that and got information out of Trump? What's going to happen is 50 years from now, 100 years from now, if there's still a, a, a world at all that's out there, what's going to happen is these intelligence agencies are going to start releasing things that happened. And we're not going to find out about this for a long time. Okay, we're going to find out that Putin has a guy who can completely, perfectly mimic Sean Hannity. Yeah. And that... Russian fake Sean Hannity and Trump have been having their bedtime phone calls regularly when Trump really thought it was Sean Hannity. By the way, if I knew as a guy who um, I created a prank TV show that um, never aired, but if I basically as a professional prankster, if I knew it was that easy, I would have been calling Air Force (laughs) One. Imagine if I got that for this show. Well, how did Stuttering John do it? I mean, we mentioned how he knows him from the the Mm -hmm. Stern show. Um, what did I read? Did Stuttering John had some phone number already? He knew one of Trump's like private cell phone numbers and called that and got the word then to the White House operator. Yeah, he Is did, that how that worked? He did what pranksters and especially social engineers do, yeah. like hackers. He just kept calling. And he <laughs> and then you keep calling till you get a sucker. And by the way, you know who the sucker was? It was Jared Kushner. That's oh, how, that's right. Yeah. He finally got through to Jared Kushner, <laughs> who is and, oh, Yeah. Man, what an idiot. You know, I I was debating whether to play this. I'm going to be using this more on the show. My friend Jack, uh, my friend Jack Barry, uh, other than you, he's the guy I talk politics with most. He calls me literally every day, whether I pick up or not, and will leave a voicemail about today's event so long (laughs) that it always runs out the voicemail, and then he'll call back. And I told him, I was like, dude, your shit is so hilarious that I have to. So basically, uh, I went ahead and just digitized the voicemail. Oh, let's hear it. this This is when he found out. Eric, what up, brother man? Um, I you're probably way ahead of me on this already because you're up on the news. I was just looking at the news. I just got home from work uh, about this guy, Howard Stern's guy, stuttering uh, John or whatever. Some of this is a little funnier if you know him, but I'm going to try to. I he, think he needed some stern mansplaining. He's the ultimate. <laughs> he didn't know he Trump into calling him from Air Force One because he thought he was Bob Menendez and not. John Melendez or whatever, but he, he, he you know, he, he. <laughs> anyway, he keeps going on and on from there, but the guy, wait, this part was funny. That story is crazy. He called the White House on some number he found online, <laughs> oh, told him that on. he was Menendez's 
<laughs> this dude, I'm telling you, Jack Barry is solid gold. He found Trump's the president's phone number online. Jack knows his stuff. <laughs> All right. There's and gave the right name for the assistant Scott something or whatever. And then Jerry Kushner called him back 45 minutes later. <laughs> Gary and Kushner. And then fucking no, said Trump called him from here. This, by the way, this voicemail goes on for five minutes. So your buddy does this every day. He, he calls me literally every day because he knows his stuff. We'll, we'll talk I about love it. that he still actually leaves messages on a voicemail. I haven't left anyone a voicemail in forever. If I call someone and I get their voicemail, I don't leave a message. I hang up and I send a text saying, hey, that was me. Call me back in a text message. Yeah. No, he actually won't <laughs> text at all. It's like, a, it's like a thing with him. Well, good for him. Yeah, very good. All right. Yeah, that was, uh, that was amazing. So God knows who's only gotten into him. Uh, on the positive front, there's only one thing. Let's go ahead and give a shout out to uh, Ms. Ocasio Cortez, who yeah. won won the primary and is going to be one of our United States that, representatives. That's we just, we met the future of uh, left wing politics. That's right. That's yeah. right. They've been they've been going after all week, and I've been very heartened to see the responses. Oh, one of my uh, favorite uh, soldiers of Ben Shapiro, Michael J. Knowles, has mm. been going after her. He has a post up today. Uh, apparently, she's not actually uh, from the block. She's from like like the Westchester County, and some. I saw that. Yeah. Right. What, what what's the truth there? That was also creepy because they put a picture of her house up. Oh yeah, it was like that. She doesn't obviously live in anymore, so you're just basically fucking with the people who live there. Yeah. Like, was that really? Was that really necessary? Is that civil? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that civil? Yeah. To be fair, um, you did just mansplain the Ben Shapiro show, by the way. Okay. Well, there's a big difference between Ben Shapiro and Howard Stern, and I'm not going <laughs> to let you give, uh, put Ben Shapiro on the same level as the great Howard Stern. Fair. Come on. You know better than that, Eric. Fair enough. Now, by the way, <laughs> since, since Mr. Shapiro reached a new height in his career, appearing on one of our favorite shows, Bill Maher, mm. what did you think about it? Uh, you know, Bill Maher, um, he likes having right-wing people on the show. I think I, I wish he could have been harder on him. Hmm. Um, he, you know, he didn't let him get away with uh, just, you know, he didn't let him slide. But I don't know. I mean, I, I was nervous because uh, I, I I'm a huge fan of Bill Maher, but I also know his tendency to give those people a break sometimes. Yeah. And what I saw. I mean, he, he calls Ann Coulter one of his best friends. Yeah. I was I was actually very pleased with the interview. Mm-hmm. And I thought Mr. Shapiro actually, you know, I don't have his, you're more, you know way more about that. I don't really get much from the guy. Like, I don't like him, obviously. I don't agree with him, but he doesn't, I don't know. I don't get much from Shapiro, but what can I just tell you? Sure. Sure. I thought he was pathetic in that interview. Okay. Why? What, what, What did you find pathetic? I thought if nothing else, this guy was a good talker on his feet, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought when he was faced with the actual intellectual, Mm -hmm. I mean, he was terrible. Well, yeah. Um, one thing Bill Maher held his feet to the fire on is how he could support Trump now. And then, yeah, and then Benji kind of tiptoed uh, tiptoed around it uh, by saying, "Oh, when he does bad things, I, I call I call strikes when he does bad things, and I and I praise him when he does good things." Well, you know what? He really doesn't. Yeah. When there is something uh, that Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire cannot ignore that Trump was awful about, that they, they give him as much of a free pass as possible. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Bill Maher also did not hold Ben Shapiro to his completely racist, anti-Muslim life choice. Right. Ben Shapiro yeah. is a really vile person. Yeah. And I've read the things he said. He said a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And all that stuff is online. The mm-hmm. tweets are there. Yeah. And then he insulates himself, though. Now, uh, all the various people associated with his website, uh, The Daily Wire, are even worse than him. He's got people on his staff that are uh, like the almost unashamed KKK white supremacists. Right. And um, Ben shields himself from that, but then he gives all these people a platform. So, well, do you support him or not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, since the last show, there was also a, um, we kind of knew this was coming. We knew this was going to happen eventually. There was a, a shooting at a newspaper. Um, of, is it the Sentinel? What was it called? It's a local paper. Uh, just a terrible event. Uh my understanding is it's a, a great paper. It's more of a, a local paper there, but it's certainly a, a respected paper. Mm-hmm. And uh, five journalists were killed. Sad story. Yeah, and of course, it has absolutely nothing at all whatsoever to do with our president declaring the media the enemy of the American right. people. No, although this, it has nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. This guy was a long-running nut who had a feud going back to 2011. But uh, 
there's already stories emerging that he frequented these websites and mm-hmm. you know it it'll all come out yeah let's it's it's not sounding good in in the favor in that favor no i'll say that yeah uh white male terrorist there's it's amazing mm-hmm. remember the austin bomber He's a, he was a white supremacist. You didn't yeah. even hear about it. it, it Wait, Austin Bomber. The guy, remember? Mark? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That story, I Gone. forgot about that. Mark, that was happening during the South by Southwest convention. Yeah, Mark that's, Anthony Condit, when yeah. they when after that dickhead blew himself up, they went when they went to his house, they found all that stuff, mm-hmm. the right wing stuff, the power, all that stuff. Yeah. It's the same guy. It's McVeigh, just mm-hmm. over and over again. The young white male. Ugh. Um, yeah, so, let's, let's build a wall around those guys. Man, tell me about it. Hey, these journalists have to stop going to these fucking rallies. That's that's. I see Jim Acosta out there. All these other people. Why are you going? That stuff is gonna sooner or later. That's gonna happen to one of them at a Trump rally. Okay, but you should. I, I have to disagree with mm. you though. They they shouldn't. I mean, you can't shy away from covering these rallies. They still have to go report on them. Well, and you know the the Trump supporters win if the media no longer shows up to cover them. I guess I just what I don't see is the journal. I think they need to do their job, and journalism is frequently a dangerous job. But I don't get the the journalistic purpose in covering these rallies. That's what I don't get. Okay, well now I, th- there's a point to be made there. Unfortunately, though, this is our president, and yeah, those rallies are news. Now, when Trump's on the microphone, he's just, you know spouting off whatever uh, whoever whichever candidate he's supposedly supporting. Um, but the rallies themselves yeah. are news, and this is going to be history because these aren't any, these aren't the kind of presidential rallies that any other president has ever held. Mm-hmm. It was one thing when he was doing this on the campaign trail, but now he's he's doing it for his own ego. Right now, in the lead up to our midterms, Trump does have the excuse that it's well he's out there campaigning, but then he's not up there campaigning. He's going up there doing his stream of consciousness BS. Right. Well, look. It, the risk of comparing them to Hitler. I mean, there's like Hitler youth rallies, not even youth. These are just, these are Hitler style rallies. And yeah, that is news. He is, by the way, he is Hitler. He just hasn't killed anyone yet. That's all. What, are you sure about that? No, we don't. No, no, we don't know. No. I like how people get upset like the, about the comparisons. It's like, well, what do you, what do you think Hitler was? Well, you know, it's not getting, it's only getting worse. Yeah. Were we talking about baby jail a month ago? Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Baby Jill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like like we've said on this podcast before, Hitler wasn't Hitler till he was Hitler. Mm-hmm. And now on what, what, July 16th, Trump has to go report to his boss. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah we're after our uh, successful summit in North Korea, who's now ramped up their nuclear talks, now we'll be going doing the same thing in Russia. Okay, that's on July 16th. You know what is the day before? July 15th? The World Cup final. Oh man. Okay. Russia cannot win the World Cup. As of the recording of this podcast right now, Russia we, is in the quarterfinals. We need a we need a break, man. Okay, well, you know what's going to be frightening? If Russia wins the World Cup, Trump's going to invite the Russian soccer team to the White House and they're going to accept the invitation. Just in case they win. I want to prepare you. Okay, no. Croatia versus Russia. This Saturday in the World Cup is going to be the most insane political football game you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. There are going to be people outside the stadium rioting. There are going to be people in the stands lighting off smoke bombs. Croatia versus Russia in the quarterfinals of the World Cup is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it's even happening. Mm-hmm. And if you don't watch soccer, it doesn't matter if you don't know who anyone on the pitch is going to be. Don't miss Russia versus Croatia on July 7th. July 7th. Yes. This coming yeah. Saturday, the World Cup has been uh, all that stuff aside, been the really the best thing going on right now. And it occurred to me that it's the only thing that the U.S. has no involvement in, which makes sense because the U.S. is ruining everything else. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's a good thing the U.S. is not in this World Cup oh, with, with the political climate right now. Oh yeah, maybe it's for the best that I, I didn't even think of that. But you're really right. I mean, yeah. Well, look, the World Cup is happening in Russia. The fact that Russia has made it through the quarterfinals is just crazy. Oh Well, if I go abroad in the next um, foreseeable future, um, oh, I'm from Montreal, brother. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm getting the Canadian <laughs> gear. No, for sure. I, I've, I've had to do it before. Remember when 
Remember Bush? They, we were fairly unpopular. Oh, back, uh, I don't know, a decade and a half ago, I had a roommate who had a brother that would travel around the world, and he stayed with us when he was in town one weekend. He made up a fake country called Dengue. And when he, when he would go, he would go like hiking in the Himalayas mm-hmm. and all through weird Asian countries. Yeah, he made up a fake country called Dengue because he didn't want to say he was an American. And this was 2003, 2004. I feel like all he had to say, though, is I'm from Canada. I know. Yeah, but he made up. A, he even had a fake flag that he made up for it. Yeah. I, I don't know where on the planet he claimed the, the country is from, but yeah. That sounds like something a Trump would do. Just like a, a harebrained scheme. Well, this is what some crazy hippie was doing during the second Bush administration. Oh, the, oh, that's when it happened? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're coming up on that 30-minute mark, and uh, we covered a lot of ground today. Yeah, and I, I'm afraid what ground we're going to have to cover next week. Yeah. Oh. Um, remember, this is the 4th of July podcast, so if you guys are out there, have a safe, uh, you know, you don't don't really want... enjoy this July 4th because you don't know how many more Independence Day celebrations we're going to have. Yeah. Yeah. It's a rough go right now. Uh, I'd like to reiterate again, uh, everyone should get out there and do their part, whether it's, it doesn't have to be marching in a rally. It can be like we created this show. And that's one of the reasons we did it. So we're contributing, whatever it is you need. Obviously the number one contribution is voting in November. But wherever you are, even you guys who listen to this show abroad, and I've been seeing a lot of new plays, which is awesome. Thank you. If there's anything you can do to help, please. Yeah. Like, please, we're in literally in jail right now. If you have, if you were one of our foreign listeners and you have loved ones here in America, just yeah, tell them to vote. Yeah. Just and, remind uh, them. They probably know to vote, but just remind them. Or just uh, t- maybe tell everyone about Mueller time, or just say not all Americans are assholes, or whatever. <laughs> just just pick something, please. And keep a couch free because we might need to yeah. <laughs> crash there. So yeah, as always, uh, my name is Eric LeVay. If you want to follow me, it's uh, E-R-I-C-L-E-V-A-I on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And, and I'm Mr. Chris Carey on Twitter. Have a great 4th of July, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you.